Now let's shift to the new chapter that's on tetracyclines. Name itself indicates tetra plus cyclines. That means these will be having four cyclic rings in the structure. Okay. And these are broad spectrum bacteriostatic antibiotics. Okay. Compared to amandocosine, okay, which are bactericidal drugs, but these are the broad spectrum bacteriostatic drugs obtained from the soil actinomycetes. Okay. And uh, some are also prepared semi synthetically in the lab. And uh, all these status in group of antibiotics will be having a similar antimicrobial features because these will be broad spectrum antibiotics. But the thing is that they will differ in their spectra as well as pharmacokinetics. Okay. Again, they will be classified into either short acting, long acting, like that. We will be discussing coming slides regarding this uh, classification of these tetracyclines. Okay. And coming to history, pro tetracycline. Okay. Pro tetracycline was the first. Tetracycline that was obtained from the soil actinomycete, that's the streptomyces aureofaciens, in the year 1948. Later on, uh, semi synthetic tetracyclines have been uh, synthesized in the lab uh, from the year starting from 1948 to 1952. And the first semi synthetic tetracycline that was produced or uh, prepared was methacycline. Okay, but the thing is that. Uh, the veterinary use of this methacycline is relatively less, okay, it's a less important compound, but it's a semi synthetic compound, methacycline. But most commonly, either in the human practice or veterinary practice, the stockcycline and minocycline, okay, are uh, the what you call this, the long acting tetracyclines. Those are exclusively used for the treatment of the various infections caused by the either gram posture or gram organisms, specifically the stockcycline is the drug of choice for the treatment of the brustosis, okay, in the human should heart. Okay, brustosis is very much common, specifically in the veterans or humans which, uh, who are in close association with animals. Okay, in such conditions, uh, they, uh, there are chances of getting the brustosis infection, and this is the drug of choice, toxicycline. And even this minocycline, you might have heard, uh, this is also drug of choice for the, you know, the leprosy. Leprosy, have you heard? Leprosy. Okay, uh, leprosy -like condition now it's been eradicated, but still. Here and there, we will be getting one or two cases of the minocycline, specifically in the humans, and uh, sorry, this is leprosy. And minocycline is the drug of choice for the treatment of the uh, this particular uh, leprosy condition. Okay. Sources sources for the various tetracyclines. Already we have told that so we have discussed the like, chloro tetracyclines open from the streptomyces aureofaciens and oxy tetracycline. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually it will be spelled as OTC, but uh, it's not a short form, but actually OTC stands for the over the counter preparation. Okay. Most of the veterans are some of the uh, what you call this practicing veterans, they used to write this prescription as the OTC, but uh, it's a wrong practice. Actually, we have to write in detail this oxy tetracycline because OTC actually the what you call that's a uh, short form stats for the over the counter preparation and it's been obtained from the streptomyces rhimosus. Okay, but uh, most of the uh, tetracyclines will be obtained from streptomyces aureofaciens, either semi synthetic, uh, for example, metacycline. What we will discuss, what we'll discuss, it's been obtained from the streptomyces aureofaciens. Okay, but remember the source streptomyces aureofaciens as well as streptomyces rhimosus from which these different types of tetracycline will be synthesized. Uh, but they have been isolated. Coming to classification, classification tetracycline depending on the duration of action. Okay, how long they lag depending on that. These tetracycline will be classified as short acting, intermittent acting, and long acting tetracyclines, where the duration of action will last for more than 16 hours. Short acting tetracycline like oxy tetracycline, tetracycline as such, and chlor tetracycline. Nowadays, though it's the first uh, discovered compound, it's a chlor tetracycline, but nowadays the usage has been reduced. Uh, because the toxicity and this is uh, nowadays it's been used as a feed active. Chlor tetracycline has been used as a feed active uh, major thing. But oxy tetracycline and tetracycline routinely have been used in the practice, clinical practice. Uh, coming to intermediate technical tetracycline, where the duration of action is less than uh, say 8 to 16 hours, demaclocycline and metacycline. But uh, because of the adverse effect, okay, because of the adverse effect, the usage of this intermediate tetracycline has been reduced. But most commonly used preparations are long acting tetracycline with toxicycline and minocycline. Okay. And others like rolling tetracycline, limocycline, clomocycline are also uh, clinically used preparations. Okay, is it clear? The classification tetracyclines depending on the duration of action, how long they will act. Whether the duration of action is less than 8 hours or 8 to 16 hours or more than 16 hours. Uh, and uh, these examples include either oxytetracycline, demaclocycline, and doxycycline or the minocycline. Coming to chemical properties, uh, these are slightly acidic and hygroscopic compounds. Okay. And uh, aqueous solution forms uh, solution uh, forms the salts with both acids and uh, bases. And uh, some of the tetracyclines they will characteristically fluoresce when exposed to UV rays. Okay, uh, specifically this toxicycline and uh, what you call this uh, demaclocycline, these will be having fluorescence properties. 
and hydrochloride salts of tetracycline is most of the clinics for example tetracycline hydrochloride or acid tetracycline hydrochloride that's the preparation that is available but except doxycycline doxycycline is always the hyclase salt okay doxycycline is available hyclase salt otherwise almost all tetracyclines will be available as a hydrochloride salt okay and these tetracyclines will form a insoluble complex that's called as a chelation okay with the calcium magnesium iron or the aluminum preparation that means one should not combine one should not use the tetracyclines with the uh, for example if have calcium preparations okay uh, what will happen they, those will form the chelation and inactivate the tetracycline and sometimes even it's a lethal also especially when you are injecting this internal tetracycline preparation one uh, because it's available with highly preparation it's a slightly highly preparation one should be very cautious or careful while administering this particular tetracycline uh, for the internal it should be slowly administered slow internal uh, injection is required otherwise what will happen there may be chance of the ebola formation and there may be chelation also that's the sound of the reason uh, therefore it should not be combined with antacid because what's the common practice for the most of the antibiotic usage usually doctor used to prescribe this anti sorry this antibiotics with the antacids okay but i heard for example omeprazole or pantoprazole tablet we have to take before meals after that one has to use this antibiotic that's a common practice but uh, coming to this tetras at least this should not be combined with antacids because this iron this uh, uh, aluminium uh, iron etc magnesium are one of the most commonest uh, ingredients of this particular what you call the antacids therefore one should not combine uh, these tetracyclines are one should not take this tetracyclines with the antacids as well as the calcium preparation because they will inactivate they will form the chelation or the complex with the tetracyclines and there may be chance of the adverse effect will be seen uh, these tetracyclines are stable as a powder okay these tetracyclines are stable as powders but aqueous solutions are not stable therefore these have to be these aqueous solutions have to be formulated with PVP, yes, sir. Nothing but polyvinyl pyrrolidine. Okay, polyvinyl pyrrolidine or poly, poly, uh, propylene glycol has to be used uh, for the stabilization. Okay, therefore, uh, if at all you are using these aqueous solutions, it should be strictly it should be mixed with either or formulated with the propylene glycol or polyvinyl pyrrolidine for the action. Okay. And uh, these tetracyclines are available in almost all forms. Okay, this is available as a powder. It's available as a powder. Order, sorry, this is a bolus, specifically the status and oxidative signal, status and bolus is available in the clinic. It's been used for the treatment of the diarrhea like thing. Okay, this uh, infectious diarrhea can be treated with around uh, four or five gram bolus, is also a status and bolus. Uh, that means it's also available uh, as a bolus, as a capsules, okay, doxycycline and minocycline capsules are available, powder, there's a feed additive, uh, this is what example I have told with the pro tetracycline. So, the feed additive, the tetracycline ointments are also available, okay, not only ointment, eye drops, okay, eye drops. That means this tetracycline is such a compound, uh, this tetracycline class of antibiotics, this will be having wide variety of, uh, because of the broad spectrum nature, this will be having wide variety of usage, okay, this will be having a wide variety of usage, and in almost all forms it's available, okay. Starting from the drops or injections or powders or ointments, anything you can take are injections. Okay, it's available as a in almost all forms. Coming to mechanism of action, uh, these are also protein synthesis inhibitor. I already have told more than uh, around 70 to 80 percent of the antibodies which are there in the market are of the protein synthesis inhibitor. Okay, uh, uh, this also uh, this particular tetracycline is also having the same mechanism of action. This uh, also causes the protein synthesis inhibition. Okay, and it will be having a bacteriostatic action. The action of this particular the mechanism of action of this tetracycline will be divided into two processes. First, the drug has to pass the bacterial cell. That's called as the pass of the tetracycline into the bacterial cell. After passing the bacterial cell or uh, the bacterial cell wall, it has to interact with the proteins. Okay, that's the bacterial uh, proteins. Uh, uh, it, that includes that uh, again. It will interfere with the protein synthesis. Again, I have told this around 30 and 50 cell subunit are the important things for the bacterial protein synthesis compared to humans, where we will be having 40 and 60 cell subunit. Okay. And this particular tetracycline will interfere with the 30 cell subunit. Okay, so that means, uh, for example, while discussing the amino glucoside, we, we have discussed that it's it's also inhibited majorly. Majorly, this amino glucoside will inhibit 30 cell subunit. But actual mechanism action is the site is in between the site with the uh, picture also or with the figure also shown. The actual site of action of amino glucoside is in between the 30 and 50 cell subunit. There's a bond in between that uh, in, in that particular bond is left. Therefore, it will be bactericidal. Whereas this uh, tetracyclines will be act only on 30 cell subunit, therefore the action will be mostly a bacteriostatic type of action will be seen. Okay. 
Now coming to the first step, that's the passage of the tetracycline into the bacterial cell. It will be again either it will be an active transport or passive transport. Okay, depending on the gram negative or gram positive organism, it, it varies whether it's active transport or passive transport. Again, in the gram positive organism, most of the time it will be a passive transport, whereas in the gram negative organism it will be seen as a reactive transport. And passive transport that means just from higher concentration to lower concentration. Okay, it it, it, it will just pass through the pouring channels. Okay, because already we discussed the bacteria, the microorganisms, the specifically the cell walls behind pourings are channels with which uh, they are, uh, the antibiotic or something has to enter into the bacterial cell. Then only action will be seen. Okay, here because the passive transport, the hydrophilic channels. Okay, there are already the established channels are there in the microbes and the cell walls. Microbes so called as the pouring channels. Okay, with which uh, uh, this particular uh, antibiotic will enter into the uh, microorganism. Okay, and the more lipid soluble members, uh, for example, this lung in that's the one reason uh, which is responsible for lung duration fraction. Okay, these are highly lipid soluble compared to the short acting or intermediate tracheal cyclines, the doxycycline, minocycline are highly lipid soluble drugs. Okay, therefore, they will get deposited in the body. Okay, therefore, they will get deposited in the body, and the duration action will also last for more than 16 hours. Okay. Whereas these highly lipid soluble members pass directly to the lipid bed because already uh, the structure already the mic microbiology class would have heard how the, exactly the structure of this particular the cell membrane cell wall will be seen. It's the hydrophilic the phospholipid bilayer. Uh, cell cell wall or cell membrane will be composed of the phospholipid bilayer. And as these are highly lipid soluble drugs, that's the structure of the they will directly pass through the lipid bilayer of the uh, cell by passive diffusion. Okay, and active transport it involves the energy dependent process okay it's an energy dependent process passage of this particular tetracycline to the gram positive require a gram positive organism requires an energy dependent carrier transport that's what i told that's a passive transport and active transport passive means the highly lipid soluble drugs highly lipid to soluble drugs they just get transferred into the vector cell through the pouring channels whereas in the gram positive organisms okay they need uh, a sort of active transport mechanism the cell the dependent process with which the antibiotic will be carried into the cell. That's the first step. Next, after that, it has to the whatever the drug that has entered with the bacterial cell, then it has to interact with the uh, interfere with the bacterial protein synthesis. Okay, once inside the cell, this particular uh, tetracycline will bind to bacterial 30s ribosome subunit. In the picture, it's very much uh, clear. Okay, there's the 30s and 50s ribosome subunit. It it will bind to 30s ribosome subunit. And this blocks, okay, binding of this particular tetracycline to the 30s level subunit will block the binding of the amino acid TRN to the acceptor set of the amino rhizo complex. Ultimately, what will happen because the binding to 30s level subunit, the protein synthesis will be inhibited, uh, or the amino acids, okay, amino acids will not be formed. That's the first step. Next, the protein synthesis will be inhibited, and because of this, the bacteria will not be. Uh, there is no nucleic acid. There is no nucleic acid for the uh, something like that. What, what you call this? The protein will not be formed. Ultimately, bacteria will not grow. Okay, uh, it, it will not develop. Or it will not grow. Will not be seen. And it will cause the bacteriostatic effect. Okay, is it clear? The mechanical function. Mechanical function. Tetracycline. First, the tetracycline has to pass the bacterial cell membrane. Then it has to interfere with the bacterial protein synthesis. That to 30s level subunit. It will bind to 30s level subunit. Thereby, it will interfere with the bacterial protein synthesis. Ultimately, the protein will not be formed. And bacteria will not be uh, multiplied. Okay, that's how the, exactly the tetracycline will act and will have bacteriostatic action. Okay, it's the broad spectrum tetracycline survey, broad spectrum bacteriostatic antibiotics. Coming to antimicrobial spectrum, as I told, these are the broad spectrum antibiotics. Therefore, the action will be seen both on aerobic and anaerobic organisms of, uh, uh, of both gram positive as well as gram negative organisms. Compared to uh, amino glucoside, though the extended spectrum antibiotics we used to test this, this uh, amino glucoside, which will be, though they will be extended spectrum, they are not active against the anaerobic organisms. What's the reason for amino glucoside? Amino glucosides are usually inactive, are not active, are naturally active, are inherently uh, inactive against the anaerobic organisms because it's a passing, passing of the amino glucoside across the cell membrane. It's an energy, it's an oxygen dependent process. Okay. Passing of the amino glucoside across the cell membrane is absolutely an independent process. Therefore, these anaerobic organisms are inherently resistant to amino glucoside. Whereas this class of or this class of antibodies called tetracyclines, the it's a highly active against both aerobic as well as anaerobic uh, organisms. Okay. Not only the aerobic or anaerobic organisms, these tetracyclines are active against the mycoplasma species also. Mycoplasma, rickets, they are chlamydia, and even some of the protozoa also. Some of the protozoa also affected by. Uh, the status section. Therefore, uh, earlier what used to tell if there is a non-specific diagnosis, if if if, if it all you won't come with exact cause of disease or something like that, blindly you can use status section. Uh, uh, those were the older days where uh, uh, this 
particular tetanus is called as that's the Rambana of veterinary profession. That means, invariably, any case, uh, specifically this uh, paravets, paravets are very much expert in using very, uh, using this particular tetanus again. I, 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 what you call this, sir? Uh, uh, if, if, if at all, there is no any specific diagnosis, blindly, uh, they, if they are using this tetanus signal, also, there was a cure from the disease because it's a highly broad spectrum uh, acting uh, uh, drug. And it's not only active against the this particular gram post gram native organism, even it's active against the most of the protozoa also or even the mycoplasma, something like crickets that uh, chlamydia, etc. So whatever the infection, okay, whatever the infection that is caused by such organisms, either it's the mycoplasma rickets or chlamydia, those will be uh, treated by using this particular tetracycline. But nowadays, because of the development of the resistance and because of the development of resistance, as well as availability of the better antibiotics, okay, better antibiotics or such antibiotics, the use of tetracycline has been reduced. Okay, clinical users, it was the drug of choice. Okay, it's a drug of choice for the treatment of the rickets infection. Okay, it's a drug of choice for the treatment of the chlamydial infection. It's called as cytokosis. You know, there's a chlamydia cytic is the organism which will uh, cause this uh, cytokosis. Okay, so in the poultry, it's been seen. Even it's a drug of choice for the treatment of the mycoplasma, spirochete infection, and bacterial infection. Okay, specifically for the treatment of the cholera or bushla infection. I will this example is doxycycline. Even today, doxycycline is the drug of choice for the treatment of the brucellosis. Okay. It's been the drug that's been used for the treatment of the cholera or brucellosis. Any, any infection, okay, caused by the aerobic or anaerobic organism or some of the protozoa species blindly can be treated with using this particular drug. That's the tetracycline group of antibiotics. And uh, various infections, various infections uh, that, that will be specifically this, uh, what you call this, uh, uh, Soft tissue infection, soft tissue infections of either uh, bronchopneumonia or urinary tract infection, metritis, mastitis, okay. The, those are the, even this uh, bone, bo uh, bone infections also can be treated this, with this particular drug, okay. Uh, you have uh, uh, thing is that uh, this tetracycline is because the, uh, uh, it's uh, bone is rich in calcium, okay. Bone is rich in calcium and this tetracycline will be having higher affinity for the calcium. That, uh, that's what I told. Uh, these, those will bind with the calcium and form the chelation, okay, because the attraction. Okay, this cationic compounds will bind with this particular tetracycline and form the chelation. And this particular property has been used as a, uh, a, 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 a for the diagnosis purpose, specifically for the bone tumor. Uh, this particular tetracycline has been used as a marker for the bone tumors. Okay, whenever uh, anybody is suspecting this bone tumor, then you can use this tetracycline. Okay, because this tetracycline, uh, as such, they will be having affinity for the bones, and bone is rich in calcium and it will get, uh, get deposited in the bone. Okay, this tetracycline will get deposited in the bone, and with that. Clearly, you can see that if at all any bone tumor, okay, what will happen in the bone tumor? There will be excessive uh, tissue growth or cell growth will be seen. And if it's a calcium, uh, this particular tetracycline is highly accommodated in the bone, means the particular person is suffering from the bone tumor. That's how this particular tetracycline has been used as a marker for the diagnosis of the bone tumors, okay. But nowadays, because of the wide usage, okay, a wide usage, the development of resistance was uh, is very much common with the tetracycline, therefore, the usage. Sorry, the clinical usage has been reduced. Coming to pharmacokinetics, absorption it varies with the compound. It, it varies with the compound because I already have told that's the uh, lipid solubility. Lipid solubility, for example, for the cytokine cyclins will be very less, whereas for long cyclins, toxicity and cyclin, the lipid solubility is very much high. Therefore, uh, the cytokine cyclins will be having a very low absorption compared to this toxicity and cyclin, which will be having a very high uh, uh, absorption uh, because of the very, and these are also highly bioavailable drugs, okay, this toxicity and minocycline, which are almost 100% bioavailable, okay. Absorption of tetracycline from the GI tract, okay, it's a decrease in the presence of the polyvalent cations, okay, for example, calcium and magnesium, which are there in the cut, they will just interfere, they will just interfere with the activity of the tetracycline and inactivate this particular tetracycline. Therefore, uh, this tetracycline should not be used, okay, uh, even the, uh, uh, the anti acids are with the milk, because so milk is also it's a rich source of calcium. Already told this tetracycline will form chelation, okay, it will form an insoluble complex, therefore, this tetracycline should not be used. Either anti acids or milk or something like that, because all will inactivate this, but all reduces the activity of the tetracycline group of antibiotics. Okay. Uh, and specifically, it's parental administration because this available is highly preparation. What I told this tetracycline is available highly preparation. Therefore, most of the time, what will happen? This uh, uh, parental administration will be always mixed with the prokine. That's uh, the, because it's called as the prokine tetracycline. Uh, therefore, the prokine it's a local anesthetic. Okay, prokine first of all it's a local anesthetic and it will reduce the uh, what you call this uh, 
pain, pain induced with, uh, because of the early protrusion of the tetracycline, okay, thereby the intramuscular injection will be smooth, okay. Whenever you are using intramuscular protrusion of this particular tetracycline and those salts will be prepared with the propane, okay, those will just reduce, uh, first thing, they will just prolong the duration of action, second, because of the local anesthetic action, the pain may not be that much severe, okay. Next, coming to distribution, okay. But distribution it varies with the compound. Distribution it varies with the compound, uh, except lipid soluble members like doxycycline and venocycline. The tetracycline do not pass the blood brain barrier. Okay, the tetracycline do not uh, pass the blood brain barrier, but they are stored in the reticular endothelial cells of the liver, spleen, as well as bone marrow. Bone marrow because they will be having a higher affinity for the calcium ions. Okay, and they also get incorporated. They are also seen they are get deposited in the forming bones, enamel, and dentin of the uh, uninterrupted teeth because the uh, attraction because the attraction towards the calcium and because this there will be chances of the uh, what you call this uh, teeth discoloration teeth discoloration is very, very much common if at all you use this particular tetracycline younger animals okay younger animals are the what you call that the kids are units if at all using this tetracycline preparations this teeth uh, discoloration is very much common okay and this tetracycline also enters the fetal circulation and amniotic fluid coming to biotransformation okay uh, the biotransformation also varies with the compound. Okay, uh, varies with the compound. This uh, lipid soluble tetracyclines, except with the lipid soluble tetracyclines, other antibiotics like uh, short acting and intermediate tetracyclines, they are least metabolized. These are least metabolized, get excreted as such in the urine as well as feces. And excretion is mainly by the glomerular filtration process that contributes almost for more than 60 percent, whereas biliary excretion uh, it will contribute for the more than 40 percent. Almost uh, what you remember the excretion. Uh, except for the lipid soluble tetracyclines, these are the least metabolized and get excreted in the urine. And by global filtration, the, uh, the rate of excretion is almost more than 60%. And these drugs also undergo enteropic circulation. This is also one of the reasons which is responsible for the lung acting uh, because of the, uh, this uh, lung duration of action. Okay, specifically the, this doxycycline. Doxycycline is a highly lipid soluble drug and it also undergoes. Uh, the centrophytic circulation. That's the reason because of this it will be having a very long duration for action. Okay. Side effects. Okay. Uh, because the broad spectrum action, because the broad spectrum action, what will happen? There, uh, there, there may be chances of this affecting the healthy microbes also. Okay. This uh, healthy gut microbes, uh, which are of useful nature, the, the, those are there in the gut. Those will also be affected because of the broad spectrum nature of this particular tetracycline. Because of this, this normal digestion process. Okay. Normal, uh, this uh, healthy gut microbes will be also affected. Because of this, what will happen? There may be chance of super infection. Okay, super infection because the overgrowth of non susceptible organisms, specifically the Candida species, which I heard nowadays uh, for the treatment of the corona, what you're using most of the time it's a steroid preparation. Specifically, the patients who are suffering from the corona will be using steroids. But nowadays, because of the what will happen, the corona has reduced now, the black fungus is taking up a hand. Okay, you might have heard that the black fungus infection is much more common. Okay, it's also a deadly disease. Okay, now the uh, even the government has declared it's uh, one has to report this black fungus cases. Okay, incidences because of the use of the steroids, excess use of the steroids will happen. Uh, that's, a, that's called a super infection. Okay, the same principle applied here also applies here also because the super infection and uh, because the broad spectrum action, uh, effect this overgrowth of the mass of susceptible microbes, specifically Candida species, will take upper end and. Uh, diarrhea is much more common. Diarrhea is much more common because of the even this uh, normal gut microbiota is also affected. Not only this uh, diarrhea, sometimes it also results in heterotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, and one more important thing, it will induce yellowish and brownish discoloration of the teeth. Okay, it will also induce yellowish and brownish discoloration of the teeth because it will be get accumulated in the growing enamel. Okay. Especially in the kids and units, uh, if at all use this particular tetracyclines because the uh, what you call this a property, it gets attracted towards the calcium, uh, the presence of the calcium in the teeth or some the enamel, and ultimately it will get deposited and leads to brownish discoloration of the teeth. Rarely you may see hypocity reactions or the cardiovascular effects. Drug interaction already in the initial slides were discussed with which this particular tetracycline will, will interact, especially anti acids. Okay. Anti-acids because those will be rich in magnesium or aluminum or iron preparations. Therefore, these anti-acids will interfere with the activity of the tetracyclines as well iron preparations. Saline purgatives. Saline purgatives also will decrease the absorption of this particular tetracyclines. Cavolin, pectin, and even the sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate, this is uh, uh, baking soda, what we used to call. Okay, that will also interfere with the absorption of tetracyclines. Therefore, one should not combine this tetracycline with such compounds. Okay, and tetracyclines will also interfere with the bactericidal activity. 
will also interfere with the bactericidal activity of the penicillin cephalosporins or amylocosin because tetracyclines are the uh, bacteriostatic drugs. Tetracyclines are the bacteriostatic drugs, but these penicillin cephalosporins are all the bactericidal drugs. Already in the initial slides or the initial class, so I told all one has to combine bacteriostatic plus bacteriostatic or bacteriostatic with the bacteriostatic. What will happen? If you combine bacteriostatic with the static, there will be antagonistic effect. Okay, there will be antagonistic effect will be seen. And if you combine bacteriostatic plus bacteriostatic, there will be active effect. Whereas bacteriostatic plus bacteriostatic, there will be potentiating effect. A synergistic effect will be seen. Whereas bacteriostatic plus bacteriostatic, there will be active effect will be seen. But these are bacteriostatic drugs. Therefore, one should not combine such class of compounds that the tetracycles with the bacteriostatic drugs like pencils, cephalosporins, etc. Otherwise, there will be antagonistic action will be seen. Okay. And concurrent use of the tetracyclines are oral, oral, with the oral coagulants, oral coagulants will further aggravate the bleeding, will further aggravate the bleeding and specifically this tetracycline should not be mixed with IV fluids that to ring the lactate as well as uh, calcium preparation. That's the most common preparation because what will happen in the, uh, while practicing in the field, we used to combine these antibiotics with the, uh, what do you call this, uh, either uh, this, uh, uh, IV fluids, okay, either normal saline or something that, uh, that uh, what we used to, we used to uh, just uh, instill or uh, what is it, infiltrate this particular uh, antibiotics into the this saline bottle, that's an normal practice, but one should not come back, one should not come back the ringus lactate, or calcium preparation, calcium aridotro that will lead to chelation and even the ringus lactate because it's a rich in sodium bicarbonate. Okay, ringus lactate it's a rich in bicarbonate that will also interfere with the activity of the tetracyclines. Therefore, one should not combine such class of antibiotics with the intravenous fluids like ringus lactate as well as calcium preparation. Coming to resistance, that's how exactly because of the wide usage, because of the broad spectrum nature, widely it's been used. Therefore, the chance of the development of resistance is also very much common. Okay. First uh, method of uh, resistance is there will be decreased penetration. Already it's a more because it's a type of natural resistance already we'll seen because the difference in the pouring channels, because the difference in the pouring channels, this antibiotic will not get entered into the organism itself. Okay. The organisms will develop such a mechanism the where there will be pouring size will be reduced. Okay. Because because the reduced pouring size, the antibiotic, uh, whatever admits in this, uh, uh, it will not get entered into the organism itself. It will not be get entered into the organism itself. Therefore, what will happen? If then, if it's not get entered to the organism, means it will not interfere with the activity of the protein synthesis. That means it will not bind to the 30 cyclic subunit, and it will not uh, interfere with the protein synthesis. Therefore, uh, the decreased penetration of the drug, decreased penetration of the drug, is also one of the mechanisms with which the organism will develop because it's a survival of the fittest. Okay, it's a survival of the fittest mechanism for the organisms. The organisms also want to survive in the body. Therefore, they'll such a they'll develop such a mechanism. They'll just reduce the pore size itself. Okay, because this uh, uh, antibiotic will not be get entered into the organism. Okay, and uh, this may also occur due to decreased antibiotic influx. Okay, there will be decreased antibiotic influx uh, because it's already told it's an active process. Uh, entry of this particular antibiotic into the organism, it's either passive diffusion or by the uh, active transport or uh, active process. And due to energy dependent, uh, some organisms will develop energy de dependent efflux process. Okay. If at all the antibiotic will get entered also into the organism, they will develop such a mechanism, there will be active efflux. There will be active efflux, uh, the whatever the antibiotic that's been entered into the organism, that will be thrown out of the organism. Okay. The antibiotic will be thrown out of the organism, thereby uh, the organism will develop a resistance or uh, they will overcome the uh, treatment with the antibiotics because, because this particular resistance mechanism. First of all, those organisms will not allow because they reduce pore size. Okay, they will reduce the pouring size, thereby the antibiotic will not get entered. If at all the antibiotic get entered also, they have developed, the organism will develop such a mechanism, there will be active efflux process with which whatever the antibiotic that's entered, uh, that's, that has been already entered with the organism, that will be get expelled, that will be get expelled, therefore, uh, thereby they will overcome the activity of this particular antibiotic. And third, they will produce the proteins, okay, they will produce the proteins which will integrate the tetracycline binding to ribosomes. Because under the told, the main mechanism fraction is, these drugs will bind to 30S ribosomes subunit. Thereby, they will interfere with the amino acid synthesis. But these organisms will develop entirely different proteins, okay, they will develop, uh, uh, because under the told, as a resistance mechanism, they will develop a different protein and that will interfere. Those proteins, whatever the, uh, that's been produced by the organism, that will interfere with the uh, activity of this particular tetracyclines. Okay, those will not allow this particular tetracyclines to bind with the 30S ribosome subunit. Okay. Also, sometimes even the plasmid mediated resistance also will be seen. Okay. So because there is a construction or conjugation mechanism. Okay. <coughs> and usually 
class resistance okay class resistance is very much common among the tata cyclists okay uh, with this class resistance already we to uh, discuss in detail in the what you call the resistance topic uh, how exactly the class resistance will happen either it will be one way class resistance or two way class resistance it's also called as complete or partial class resistance okay with the example of amino glucose also we have seen this is delta machine or neo machine or amino combination okay here also the same principle applies okay class resistance is very much common for the tetracyclic group of uh, antibiotics okay and rarely uh, the antibody uh, the microbes will also develop some of the enzymes okay those will inactivate this particular tetracycline that's been entered into organism thereby they will overcome the activity of this particular tetracycline coming to the uh, detailed classification of drugs that's the uh, first classification that's the short acting tetracyclines where the duration fraction will be less than eight hours okay and the first example is oxytetracycline oxytetracycline is also called as teramycin teramycin uh, uh, this, uh, uh, it's nothing but the oxytetra screen. It's the most widely used preparation. It's the most widely used veterinary preparation. Okay. Uh, specifically, the veterinary practice, the oxytetra screen is the most widely used antibiotics among the tetra screen. Not only the among tetra screen, uh, among all class of antibiotics, this oxytetra screen is the most widely used preparation. It's obtained from the streptomyces thymosis. It's actinomycin, soil actinomycin. Okay. It occurs as a pale yellow color. As such, you, you might have seen if. Uh, 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 if you are visiting any clinics or something like that, you just see the wire of this particular tetra so it will be light yellow color. It's a pale yellow or tan yellow color. It's a crystalline powder, slightly soluble in water, and it's a sparingly soluble in the alcohol. Commercially available as oxytetracycline hydrochloride. That's what I call Most of the tetracycline preparations are, uh, preparation are available with the hydrochloric salt, except doxycycline, which is available as a high clear salt. Okay? And uh, because of the, uh, what you call this, uh, a variation in the solubility, it should be mixed with propylene glycol, propylene glycol or polyvinyl poly poly okay, which will enhance, uh, which, which will stabilize this particular compound in the liquid form. And this oxytetracycline is readily absorbed after over administration and viability varies up to 60 to 80 percent. Okay, after intramuscular injection, the peak plasma concentration will be achieved within uh, one to two hours. Okay, it will cross, it will get distributed all over the body except CSF and brain. That means it won't pass the blood brain barrier. Okay, and as such, it will be get excreted as such in the urine as well as bile. Okay, it's a least metabolized drug because it's a short acting tetracycline, it will be least metabolized drug compared to long acting tetracycline, that's a doxycycline, minocycline. It will be get excreted as such in the urine, get unchanged in the urine and bile. Uh, bile. And it's a little portion, okay, little bit portion will also get excreted in the milk. Okay, and this particular acetate is also available in depot preparation. Depot preparation means which will be having a prolonged duration fraction. Usually, uh, for short and interesting, what we have discussed is the burst fraction is less than 8 hours. Okay, but the depot preparation can uh, achieve a higher concentration even up to 70 to 96 hours because it's the slowly get released. Okay, it's the slowly absorbed and slowly get released preparation. It's available as a depot preparation. Therefore, whatever the interesting uh, is there in the preparation to be slowly get released. Uh, therefore, the burst fraction will last up to 70 to 96 hours. Dosage is around 5 to 10 milligram per kg body weight. Subcut or intramuscular and one to two times daily. And if at all you are using by oral route, the dosage can be exactly doubled around 20 mg per kg body weight thrice daily. Okay. In almost all species, that's one of the important things. This tetracycline, because uh, whenever you are administering any drug or something like that or any preparation, uh, specifically to the horses or the cats, one should be very careful. Okay. Uh, because almost all drugs which are there in the market, those, those may not be effective or those may not be active, again, specifically in the species like horses and the cats. But this class of antibiotics, that's a tetracycline, it's a broad spectrum, bacteriostatic, and can be blindly used in almost all species. Okay. Uh, therefore, it's the most popular preparation. Okay. Therefore, because the blind usage in almost all species, you might have seen, you might be looking at the side, it's been used in dogs, cats, even cat, sheep, goat, pigs, horses, poultry, uh, lambs, piglets, etc. etc. Something that means it blindly it can be used in almost all species, okay, for the treatment of the various infections caused by either gram positive or gram negative. Okay. And it's also used in poultry as a drinking water. Uh, that means it's been mixed with the drinking water, specifically to treat the any wet liquid problem. Next, coming to tetracycline. Uh, Oxytetracycline sources streptomyces rhimosus, whereas this tetracycline is obtained from the streptomyces areophasians. Okay. Uh, also, it's uh, they are semi-synthetically from the oxytetracycline. Okay. This tetracycline semi-synthetically produced from the oxytetracycline. Otherwise, naturally can be obtained from the streptomyces areophasians. Okay. Uh, slightly less soluble compared to oxytetracycline, but it's the most stable preparation. It's the most stable preparation. It's also available as a tetracycline hydrochloride salt, 
okay, and get readily absorbed after oral administration. And specifically used for the treatment of the, it's also a widely used compound, but relatively less commonly used compared to oxytetracycline. It's a less common use, but it's also used routinely for the treatment of the various infections caused by the either gram or gamma organisms. It's been used and dosage remains same, okay? Dosage remains same to the type of oxytetracycline. If you're using for perinatal preparation, it will be around 5 to 10 mg per kg body weight. And if at all you're using oral preparation, the dosage can be doubled up to 20 mg per kg body weight. Next is chlorotetracycline. Okay, chlorotetracycline, it was the first uh, tetracycline that's been obtained from the streptomyces aureopatiens. Okay, chlorotetracycline is the first tetracycline that's been isolated, uh, that's been uh, obtained from this particular streptomyces aureopatiens species. It's also occurs as a golden yellow or light yellow color. It's also fairly soluble in water, but has a very strong bitter taste. Okay, absorption is very less, it's less than 30% of our administration. Intramuscular is very much painful. Okay, therefore, if you are using this particular core tetracycline for the intramuscular preparation, always mix with propyl. Uh, but the, uh, what you call nowadays, uh, the clinical usage of this particular core tetracycline has been restricted to only as a growth promoter. Okay, especially in the piglets or something like poultry, it's been used as a growth promoter, but not used for routinely for the treatment of the various infections caused either by the gram or gram organisms. Okay, the clinical usage has been restricted. For this particular pro tetracycline only as a growth promoter, okay. Specifically in the pigs, okay. Pigs as well as cattle. And not only the pigs are cattle, uh, 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 it can also use in the poultry as a growth promoter, okay. Almost around 20 to 50 milligram per kg body weight, or almost it can be used up to uh, 300 to 400 gram per ton of the poultry. It can be mixed, it can be mixed with the poultry feed as a growth promoter. 